Hi, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us. My name is Brianna Miker, and I am one of the support managers here at YOLA. Now, I would imagine that many of you are here today having realized that a website is very important for you and your business. A website gives you an online presence, meaning you and your company are available 24-7. A website gives you an easy outlet to engage with your customers, as well as endless networking opportunities. Before you begin the website building process, it is really nice to have an idea of the direction you wish to take with your website. This is not only beneficial to the creation process, but it also helps pave the way for your business branding. I personally find it very helpful to have that material prepared, whether it be some text, maybe a picture or two, or an assortment of both, which I can refer to while I'm building my website. So the company I'm going to build a website for today is called Cozy Cake Makers, a San Francisco-based bakery. And I have here the free YOLA subdomain I will be publishing the website to, along with their site tagline, the pages I will be creating, as well as their business location. Great, let's head over to the template gallery and get started. Now what I really like about the template gallery is that after selecting one of the templates, you are able to go in and really see what is available to you with that template. It's always nice to pay attention to where the navigation menu is, whether or not there is a logo. Um, you certainly can go in and customize those areas on the templates on your own. However, if you find one that works alongside the lines of what you have in mind, it may make the process a bit easier for you. So today I'm going to use Serendipity, and what I love about this template is that we have this gorgeous side navigation, our logo is present, and above everything else we have this huge image, and that's really the focus on our pages. With the bakery, we want to showcase what it is that they offer to their clients. Um, today it will be mainly cupcakes, and this picture will really allow us to do that. So let's go ahead and click on use this template. At this stage, we are able to enter our website name and select a website category. I'm going to go ahead and select food and restaurants and then click continue. Now you do have the opportunity to enter in your contact information or you can choose to bypass this step. Since I do have it handy, I'm going to go in and type that in right now. Now some templates will actually take this contact information and apply it to your Contact Us page, so it can be extremely helpful for you. Let's go ahead and click on Finish Setup while our website will load into the Site Builder. All right, there we have it. As you see, our website is loaded here into the Site Builder, and now we can go ahead using our template that we've selected to add our own customizations. Now, what we're going to use for almost all of our customizations today is a tool called the Style Designer. And this feature can actually be accessed in one of two ways. You can either access it by clicking on the Page tab and then selecting Style Designer. Or you can hover over to the upper right-hand corner of your the body section of your website and click on the little palette icon. Now the style designer does offer you with either a basic or an advanced mode, both really following suit with what those words mean. Um, today I'm going to use the advanced mode to really show you some of the possibilities we have with the style designer. So let's go ahead and get started. The first area I'm going to customize is our business logo. Right now, we have our page title present. However, we are going to replace this with a logo, which will really provide that attention, um, an attention grabber, a striking picture that will just really um, hit home with our, 
site visitors. Now to add this to our site, I'm going to locate logo in the style designer, click on edit and select image. As you can see, my file manager has opened and since we have not uploaded anything yet at this point, it is empty. So to get a file in there, we're going to click on the upload files button, which will open up our computer so we can access the files right on our computer. Today I'm going to lo locate our logo, click on open and add it to our file manager, at which stage I can select our logo and apply it to our website. There it is. Now we do have the opportunity here to also adjust the width of the logo if we wanted to. And like I said, I'm going to keep it at that big width. I really like how prominent it is right now. So the next area we're going to focus on is our website fonts. Now our style designer does provide numerous amounts of fonts that you are able to choose from individually, where you can actually go in and set different fonts for every single header or para paragraph text on your site, or you can opt for a font preset, which I'm going to be doing today. And what this is, is it really just has two fonts that work well together, they're very compatible, um, and then you don't have to go in and set everything individually. So some people like to have that freedom with the individual settings and others prefer the presets. So we're going to choose the dancing script preset today. Excellent. Now what I really like about this font is, as you can see, we have this nice cursive writing, which really looks well with our logo. Now we're going to continue progressing down our page, focusing mainly on this left hand sidebar. And I'm going to look next at our navigation menu. The first thing I'm going to do is change the navigation color from this gray with the red selected and hover color. We're going to find something that matches our logo and will work better with our website altogether. So let's start with the actual color of the navigation. To open the, the settings for that particular area, you can click right on that portion of your website, which will automatically pull up the navigation settings, or you can just locate it under all properties. Now, when you go to make any color changes in the style designer, you have the opportunity to use this nice color palette where you can go in and check out everything different and watch you can watch the changes take place which is really convenient to find something that works for you or you can type in a hex code which today i do have the hex codes handy so i'm going to go ahead and type that in to get a nice white color for our navigation menu i would also like to change the navigation selected and navigation hover font colors to that purple that we're using in our logo now, navigation selected is the color that the page in the navigation menu will display as when we're on that particular page. So currently, you can see that navigation selected in the style designer has a red color attribute. And right here on our site, we see that red attribute as well. If we change to the menu page, menu would now highlight in red and home would go to white. So we're going to change that red color to the same purple that we use in our logo. And I do have that hex code handy, so I'm going to type that in manually. Great. And I'm going to go ahead and just copy it since I will also be using that for our hover color. What the hover navigation hover color does is when a site visitor is visiting us online, if they, for example, hovered over menu, menu would then highlight in purple. So it really just helps your site visitors navigate your page, again, allowing you to keep that customization and the um, compatibility with the rest of your site. So I think we are headed in the right direction. Before I continue, I do want to draw your attention to a really handy tool that may come in handy while you're creating your site. We have blogged about it and I'm going to share that link with you, but first let me explain what it offers to you. Here we go. 
Now the tool is called Adobe Cooler and what it does is it allows you to actually upload a picture that you plan on using on your website and then it provides you with a color scheme matching that picture. So it is extremely helpful if you perhaps need a little inspiration of which colors to draw out of the picture and onto your website. So I, I personally love this, um, love this tool and I've used it many times on my own. You are more than welcome to. Now let's continue working on our navigation menu. We have this beautiful dancing script font family applied, but I think we can do a little bit more to really make that navigation menu stand out. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to scroll down to the fonts area and select navigation. Great, next we are going to locate font size. And again, you have the opportunity, one of two ways to adjust this. You can either use the scroll bar to increase the font size, or you can enter in a pixel amount. For this demonstration, I think I'm gonna bump it up to around 45. Excellent. Now, in doing that, I noticed a few things. I noticed the navigation menu got a little squished and it's not displaying like we, like we necessarily want it to. So let's, let's continue adjusting a few things. We're going to locate the text transform and change it to inherit. And now we're going to add a little space in between these two areas. We're going to locate navigation spacing. And instead of keeping that 12 pixels, we're going to insert 30 pixels. And that will give us a little bit more cushion in between those navigation items. Now the last area that I'm going to focus on with this sidebar is the actual sidebar color. I'm going to click directly on the sidebar and then select sidebar background. Now, as you can see, a hex color has been input and this is for white. And we do have an 85% opacity. Now, I like the general direction that we're heading. However, I do want our background picture to stand out a bit more. So what I'm going to do is actually go in and adjust that opacity from 85% down to 40%. There we go. Now we will be able to see our white text better as you can see in this example. We'll, we'll go in and change this picture to one of our own, but it really does allow this text to stand out. And I think that it'll look really nice with what the general direction that I'll be heading in soon. So let's go ahead now and upload that custom background. I think we are making great progress. And once we get that background image in, we'll be able to really see why the navigation why the sidebar and the navigation menu is set for how it is. Now we can upload our background image by clicking on background image in the style designer and following a very general steps is what we did for the logo image. We'll click select image, upload our new file, and add it to our file manager. Once it has been uploaded to our file manager, we'll go ahead and apply it to our site. Oh, there we go. I'm actually going to go ahead and save our changes. I just want to ensure that all of our hard work that we've put into this so far is, is going to be there and we can, we can continue on with this. Now, when you go to save the changes, since I've added a background image, we do have the opportunity to save these changes to every page on our site or just this one. Now, since I will be making unique pages going forward, I'm just going to select, no, I do not want to apply these to all of our pages. All right, things are saved. Let's go ahead and reopen up the style designer. There we have it. Now, when we go back into the background image area, you will see that quite a few fields have appeared now that we have our custom image. What I'm going to do here is adjust the position of our image. It is currently set to center, center. And again, you have a, a quite a variety to choose from here. I'm going to select top center, which will really showcase our cupcake a little bit better. 
great. The last thing I'm going to do to this is apply a white foreground color and adjust the opacity. So let's click on foreground color, type in our white hex code, and move our opacity. Now I would like to make the opacity a little bit less than our sidebar navigation, so they complement each other very well. I think 30% looks pretty good. There's 31, we'll bump it down a little bit more. Great, now this gives us this beautiful layering effect. And what is already on our website, um, we're actually going to go in and build on top of this. So we'll be able to read our text well, and I just think it will look very, very wonderful. So let's go ahead and close out of the background image and continue down. I have just a couple other areas to customize within the style designer, and then we can get started with adding our own content. Speaking of content, let's go ahead and change the content area background color. Now we can achieve this by clicking right on the content area. As you see, you can hover over to your page and um, highlight specific areas of it. We want the whole content background area, which is right here. We're going to click on that and then select content background. Now again, we're going to apply that white. Now this time, I'm going to move the opacity to 40%. As you may recall, and you are currently seeing, it matches our sidebar perfectly. And that is exactly what we wanted to achieve today. Um, we really have that consistency by doing this, and it's, that's just a really good thing to keep in mind when you're building your site. Now the content that we add to our site will fall within this content area. So this box that you see here, that's where all the information we add to our website is going to be placed. So what I'm going to start with doing is giving a little bit of spacing between each side of this content area and our actual content. To do that, I'm going to click on Content Padding and add a 50 pixel margin to each side. You can see these adjustments taking place while I enter that in there. Great, now I'm going to go ahead and focus directly on our fonts. So I'm actually going to locate paragraph text up here below colors. And instead of this off-white that's very difficult to read with our frosting, I'm going to enter in a very nice legible gray. There we go. Now we can see this text much better and we will close out of that paragraph text area. Now our second header, we're going to adjust a little bit more. We will be changing the font color and then we will also be changing a couple of the font attributes. So let's go in and locate the second header and change it from white to our same purple that we used before. There we go. And now we're going to locate second header below fonts so we can continue on with our customizations. The first thing we're going to look at is letter spacing, which is currently set to 30 pixels. I'd like to bump that down to one, really bringing those letters in closer together. I would also like to change the text transform to inherit. And that's looking good. Now our final font change will be for our third header. And for this one, we are still going to apply that same purple color we've been using throughout. Thanks for bearing with me while I type that in. Excellent, now that wraps up our font changes. Now there's one more area that I would like to point out in the style designer before we add in our own content. If you look very closely in our content area, you may be able to make out this call to action button. It is very, very difficult to read and we are going to make that stand out right now. Any call to action on your website can be extremely beneficial as it really helps you promote site visitors to take that next step. 
For example, if you want somebody to get in touch with you or perhaps schedule an appointment, um, request a quote, you are able to use that, use that button and really encourage them to take that next step. So for now, we're going to go in and just make this button stand out. We want it to be put to good use. We want our site visitors to be able to see it and understand that it's there and be intrigued to click on it and see where it takes them. So we can click directly on this button, which will open up our medium button attributes. The first adjustment we're going to make is to the style. It is currently set to an outline, but I would like to make that a solid button. There we go. We are also going to change the background color. It is currently at a little bit of an off-white, and I'd like to see that purple come back again. We're looking good. Let's change that font color so it's a bit more legible. And the last adjustment we're going to make on this is the actual font size. I'm going to go back to all properties and scroll down to our button again. We'll click on font and bump that 15 pixel. Let's try out a few things. 30 looks a little too big for me. I think 20 pixels is just perfect. We can give that a try knowing that if we would like to adjust it later, we will always have the opportunity to come back in and do just that. Now, as you can see, compared to what we had before, our button widget is now very easily spotted, and it, it, I'm hoping it gives the boost, um, just the right little boost that we need to lead our site, our site visitors in the right direction. Now, in order to make this button workable, I mean, we, we want it to go somewhere, we will be adding a link to it. However, we're going to wait and add that as soon as our other pages have been created. So we will revisit that in just a little bit. Now let's go ahead and save our changes in the style designer. Again, we are able to apply the changes to all pages or one. I'm going to go ahead and choose just this one page again by selecting no. Now we can really go in and customize our website as much as we would like. Um, this website will demonstrate Quite a few areas that you can you can customize, including pictures, text, again revisiting those buttons. We're going to add a custom form. So I say we just take it page by page, and in no time we're going to have our own custom site. So let's go and first add in a picture. Now I want to show you a really neat trick for adding an image to your website. If you click on the widgets tab, you are able to explore all of the widgets that we offer to our, our, to our clients, to you guys. Um, the picture and the picture gallery widget are two of our more popular widgets. But today I'm gonna show you a trick that you can actually add a picture using the text widget. Now you, for, for today's demonstration, I'm just going to use our logo again since I already have it but you are more than welcome to upload any type of picture using the text widget. Um, it doesn't have to be a logo, it can be a normal JPEG or ping or you know, a valid file or a valid, a valid picture file, um, but certainly it is not limited to just a logo. So once you click into the text widget anywhere, you will see the text editing toolbar load. At this stage, you can locate the add image icon which looks like, it looks like a little picture frame. We can click directly on that, where we have the opportunity to upload a new image, browse uploaded images, or find a stock image. As mentioned earlier, I will be using our logo for today's demonstration, so we will choose the browse uploaded images. Then we'll add that to our site. And there we have it. Now the only adjustment I'm going to make to this is the actual size of the logo. To adjust the size of a picture added with the text widget, you can click directly on the picture and then drag in any one of the corners. I want just a little taste of that. So now I do want to point out that a lot of people like using the text widget if they're looking to wrap text and pictures with each other. Also, many of our clients have had great success using this method to add many pictures in a row. 
So definitely feel free to explore it if you are interested in adding pictures this way. Now, moving on down the page, I'm going to remove the pre-populated text here. We no longer need that. And for your sake of not sitting here and watching me type everything out, I actually have all of the text I'll be using today prepared ahead of time. There we go. And the first thing I'm going to do is highlight welcome. I'm going to apply our second heading to this. Now, if you recall, when we were doing all of our style designer changes, we did apply specific attributes for heading two. So they should apply when we select it right now. Let's have a look. There we go. That looks great. The last thing I'd like to do is just left align our paragraph text. Excellent. Now, the last thing we're going to do on this page, just for right now, is adjust the text of our call to action button. It is currently um, pre-populated with browse our menu. We're going to go ahead and change that to get a quote by pressing the edit button on the widget. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we will revisit all of these buttons to add our links. Um, it is good to note that you are also able to adjust margins, alignment, and the size of your button if you choose to. Now, the final touch we're going to make to this page is adding in some metadata. Now, I want to show you an example of one of our clients who really has set up her metadata well, and I want to show you how it's displaying in Google. Now, as you can see, I have searched Handmade Wedding Invitations Leeds UK. Now, these top three, these top three um, links here are all advertisements. That's why they say add next to them. And the first actual response from Google here is bespoke handmade wedding invitations and stationery. And this is our client hall. Um, not only are we given the title, we are also able to read this the description that she's entered for her homepage. And also we can see that the keywords that we searched for have been highlighted here. So I'm going to show you how you can add this type of information to your website. And it really, it's, it's really important to take some time to focus on your website's search engine optimization. So let's revisit our, style, our site builder and add in our metadata today. Now you can access the metadata section by clicking on the page tab and then selecting metadata. We will go ahead and save our changes and then we'll see the page metadata open up. As you see, we are given a blank canvas for our description and keywords, which again, I do have prepared today. There we go. Now, it is important to note that metadata is added on a page by page basis. So you definitely want to go in and take care of this for every page of your website. Um, and I want to point out that if you see the keywords that I'm using here, these come directly from the text that I have applied to my website. So that is extremely important um, for allowing the search engines to find your website, know what you're all about. So once you have that filled in, you can click OK and the page metadata will be saved. We do have a blog post that provides tips for adding your website's metadata. And I'll go ahead and share that with you guys as well if you are interested in reading further. All right. We have actually completed our home page, and I think it's time to move on to our next page. Now, we have put a decent amount of intention into customizing our home page. We haven't spent that much time on it, but we have spent, you know, all of those little details. And I really, really like how it's coming together. So instead of taking that time to recreate the layout on our next couple pages, I'm going to go ahead and just duplicate this page. Now, how, how you do that, <laughs> you may be asking, you can click on the page tab and then select save page as. At this stage, you need to name your page. And I'm going to name it about. And you are also able to choose whether or not you wish for the page to display in your navigation and whether or not you wish to password protect it. I'm going to continue with it displaying in the navigation, but I don't have a need to password protect it at this time. Let's go ahead and press OK. 
Now, as you can see, our About page has been created and it is absolutely 100% identical to our home page. Now, to keep this page consistent with the work that we've done on our home page, but also to allow it to be a unique page with its own special features, we're going to start by uploading a new background image. So let's go ahead and open the Style Designer again, click on Background Image, and upload a new one. Once it has saved to our file manager, we can apply that to our site. Excellent. We'll save the changes only to this page and close out of the Style Designer. <clears throat> Excellent. Now we can go ahead and get rid of our home page text and enter in our new text specific to this page. Again, I will be pasting that in and we'll actually be following the exact same steps as we did earlier, highlighting the About Us text, applying a header to attribute, and then centering it. The only other change we're going to make on this page is adjusting our call to action. We do think it would be beneficial to keep another call to action. However, we don't want both of them to be the exact same, leading the clients in the exact same direction. So this time, instead of get a quote, let's go ahead and enter contact us. Again, we will revisit this for our links in just a little bit. Let's save those text changes and move on. Now, oh, I almost went ahead without adding the page, the metadata. So let's go ahead and do that before I forget. Then we'll get to our contact page. Now, since we duplicated our page, we are seeing the metadata from the last page. If you were starting with a brand new page that was not duplicated, you would not have to delete, delete the information in there. You would have a blank slate, but we'll just go ahead and replace that with, with the new information. There we go. All right, now it is time to move on to our last page, which is our contact page. We will be duplicating this about page and save our new page's contact. So again, we're still in the page tab. We're going to select save page as and change it to contact us. All right, let's save that and proceed. There we have it. Now, this page is going to be a little different than the others. And the reason behind that is because it is our contact page. We're going to keep this logo we're going to keep all of the, site, the style designer attributes just to maintain that consistency. However, on the left-hand side, we're actually gonna do a two column, you guys. It's going to be really great. On the left-hand side of the two columns, we're going to include our physical contact information and address. And on the right-hand side, we're going to create a form where site visitors can actually fill out the form and get in touch with us. Since we have that form, we will no longer need this call to action button as our form will be acting as our call to action on this page. So let's start by deleting that. Anytime you need to delete a widget, you can do so by hovering over the widget and clicking the X in the upper right hand corner. It is very important to note that once you delete a widget, you cannot retrieve it again. So please make sure that you are deleting the correct widget. And if you're ever unsure, I would recommend duplicating a page um, and just holding on to that content and if there's the slightest, slightest opportunity that you'll need it again. But we're sure in this case, so we're going to delete that as well as our pre-populated text here. Excellent. Now we can go ahead and add that two column layout in that I explained a little bit ago. Now to achieve this, I'm going to make use of one of my favorite widgets that we offer, which is the column divider widget. The absolute best part of this widget, in, in my opinion, is that you can add any widget you would like to either side of this column divider widget. So if you wanted a picture on one side and text on another, or perhaps another column divider widget on one side, you are not limited in that regard. So I'm going to use a text widget on the left-hand side and a form widget on the right-hand side. Let's go ahead and start with the text. Following suit with the other text today, I do have it prepared for us. 
I will be pasting that in there. This time, I'm actually going to highlight and apply the heading to attribute to visit us as well as ours. I will then highlight all of the text and center it. Great. Now we can go ahead and add in that form widget. We do offer a form widget under our popular category. Um, please note if you're ever um, not able to find something, you can also search for a widget here. If I searched form, I would see the different variations of forms that we are able to achieve. So I'm going to choose the form widget and drag it onto my page. Now, after dropping this widget onto your page, you do get this little box that allows you a couple different opportunities with regards to your form. You can use a pre-populated form that includes a name, email, phone, and message field. Or you can select blank form, which allows you to build your own. So I'm going to go ahead and use the, the generic contact us form for now. There we go. I would like to adjust a few things to this. Um, our clients today do not need an email field. And I think they want to have a little bit of fun with the submit button. To make adjustments to your form, you can click on edit in the upper left hand corner. And at this stage, you have quite a few opportunities to achieve things. You are able to delete fields. You can click and drag fields into a different order. Um, you can edit what the labels say on the fields. Again, quite the variation. And I do encourage you to go in and just play around with this and get familiar with it. Like I said, we don't have a use for the email field, so I'm going to delete that out of our form. I'm also going to hover down to the submit button and change that to let's chat. Great. Now I do want to point out one thing. We, we receive a lot of emails about this from clients and I think it would be beneficial to point it out right now. The YOLA form will automatically send form submissions to whichever email address you have used to create your account. So currently, I am just in my test account, but that is where these forms are set to go. So if you wanted to change where they were sent to, you could go ahead and enter in a new email address. You are also able to change the message that your site visitors will receive after submitting a form. So I've changed my email and I'm going to keep the message as is and save all of those changes. There we go. As you see, our email field has disappeared and our button is currently at Let's Chat. Now, if you wanted to, I, I just want to put this out there for you guys. If you wanted to create a submit button or a Let's Chat button that looks like our call to action buttons that we were creating earlier, that is something that is achievable using a bit of custom coding. It is another topic that we have covered on our blog and I would like to show that to you right now. As you see, here is a form similarly to the one that we have just added to our website. But as you see their submit message button looks just like a call to action. So if this is something that you are interested in, we have a wealth of information on how to achieve it. Um, adding, enabling CSS edits, the, the coding edits that are needed, does require a YOLO Silver or a YOLO Gold account. But I know many of you are, are here and may be interested in that and perhaps you already are on that level of account. If you're not, you're more than welcome to explore what we offer. Now there are just a few final changes that I want to make to this website. Let's click on back over there. The first is removing the menu page as we really haven't worked on that today and our clients don't need it at this time. Now to remove this page, you can simply hover over your navigation menu and click on edit menu. Let's save our changes and we'll see the page manager open up. The page manager offers us many opportunities. We can edit pages, rename pages, delete pages, um, choose to apply sub menus or hide, hide pages from our menu. You can adjust the order by dragging, clicking and dragging directly on those. Today we're just going to go ahead and delete the page. 
Again, you do want to make sure that it is the correct page as you will not be able to retrieve it again. If you are, you can go ahead and click OK and then close out of the page manager. As I close out of here, you should see menu disappear on our navigation menu. Let's keep an eye at that. Excellent. As you see, we are left with the three pages that we worked on today, and that's exactly what we wanted to do. Now it's time to add our metadata to this page, and then we will go back and revisit our button widgets and get those links in there. Excellent. There's our metadata. Now we're going to go ahead to our home and about page and add those links in. On our button widgets, you do have the opportunity to link to a various um, of locations. You can select a page in the site, an external link, an email address, or a file stored in the site. You are also able to provide a title and choose whether or not you want those pages to, or those links to open in a new window. So today we're going to do the let's chat to contact us, or actually it's called contact us, so that would be pretty fitting. We'll save those changes and move back to our home page where we have our get a quote. And for this one, I'm actually going to link to my email address. Excellent. Save that and save our pages. <clears throat> Now the final thing I'm going to do to our website is add a favicon. And what a favicon is, is it's that little image that appears on your browser tab. For example, if you look up here to these Yola pages, you will see the little circle with a Y in it, and that's what our favicon is. Um, here's Google's with the G in it. So we're going to go ahead and upload our own. To do this, we're going to click on the Site tab and then select favicon. Go ahead and save that. Perfect. Now, favicons are great to have. As you can see, most mainstream websites have them, and I would highly recommend them. Um, if you are interested in creating one, if you don't have one, we actually have a blog post, again, that highlights, highlights this process. And what's wonderful about it is, as you can see, there are a few examples of current favicons. Um, you are also given a link to a favicon generator, so you can go in and customly create your own favicon. So I would highly recommend that to you guys if you are interested. Now I think it's time to go in and publish our website. Since we're on the free level, we're going to be using a free Yola subdomain today. If we had a paid level, we would be able to purchase a custom domain, publish to a custom domain that we already own, whether it be through Yola or one that is pointing to us. But today I'm just going to use a free subdomain. We'll do cozycakemakers.yolasite.com. So let's take a look at what we have achieved today. This is online and available for anyone to view. I'm going to click through our pages here and see how everything looks. I think this site really came together with what we had. I'm noticing a few areas that I would make adjustments. I would add a little margin here. It's a little close to the logo, but I think it is a great base and we're, we are definitely headed in the right direction. Um, and I'm very, I'm very proud of what we've accomplished. Gosh, we've added a lot to this site and have made it very, very usable and very, it's just very convenient. So I'm excited to share this with Cozy Cake Makers and um, continue working with them on it. I want to take this moment to just say thank you to each and every one of you who has joined us today. Thanks again, you guys. Take care.